All right. Hi, everyone. Good morning. It is episode two of yes. Gary the Insurance Wizard. Absolutely. I know. And you're, you're a busy man. Oh, uh, <laughs> real busy. Yeah. Why are you yeah. so busy? Well, open enrollment's coming to a close, and it's just very, very busy. Okay. So if people didn't watch episode one of Gary the Insurance Wizard, explain to us what open enrollment is. Well, open enrollment is a, is a period of time where people with pre-existing conditions can go out to the marketplace and get insurance. Um, whether it's through, you know, a uh, private carrier or one of the ones through Obamacare. Mm -hmm. And they can also qualify if they, if they need to uh, with financial subsidies. Right. And so, um, um, so pre-existing conditions doesn't mean like a major illness. It can be something even minor, minor. right? Yeah, absolutely. Like give me some examples of pre-existing you know, conditions. Uh, out of control high blood pressure, right. diabetes, which is very prevalent in our society today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are the types of people that really need to take you know, take this very seriously because after after the 15th, they're going to have to wait till next November to get insurance. To get insurance. Yeah. And some people are really try are really, um, they have a lot of issues with, um, with the cost, right? Yeah. I mean, and you can actually, like a lot of people get into these plans not knowing that they can have insurance for much cheaper, yeah, right? Absolutely. If, if they qualify for uh, the, a subsidy through their income, mm -hmm. then they can have it for, for much lower cost than what it is. Because the, the, the usual cost on Obamacare uh, through the Affordable Care Act, I say that lightly, right. it's not so affordable, um, mm -hmm. it's expensive. And this year, there is something new. So you're not being taxed anymore if yeah. you don't have insurance, correct? Correct. correct. So, so that's a big change. Big change. Big change this year because the urgency for some of the people who thought they were bulletproof and you know didn't think they were going to get sick. There's no urgency because they don't have to pay the penalty. Mm -hmm. So they'd rather go without insurance. And that's not really the reason you should buy insurance is to avoid a penalty. You should, you should have yourself insured and your family insured to protect you against you know, the illnesses and, and things that can happen. And I'm sure you've seen some really bad situations really where bad people stories. think they're bulletproof oh, and yeah. they're not. Absolutely. Right. Within a day, it can change. Yeah. Yeah. And so you really suggest to people what? Like what do, pe what do you suggest to people when they first call you up and they're having, um, they're wanting to, to find insurance? Like what, well, is, what are some of the things they need to think about? They really need to think about, you know, what their past medical costs have been. Mm -hmm. You know, their everyday expenses, doctor visits, occasional prescriptions, you know, a couple labs during the year, because that's where we can really help, mm -hmm. you know, with, with something that has a very low or even no deductible for people who are relatively healthy. And that's really the person who says, look, if I'm going to pay health insurance premiums, I'd like to get some sort of benefit from the plan. Right. All right. So we have some kind of amazing, surprising stories. I mean, yeah. when I came to your office and was talking to some of your agents about some of the stories they've had during open enrollment, um, it's pretty surprising. It's surprising and pretty scary at yeah. the same time. And you say it happens all the time. Every day. All right, so let's listen to Sevi, who um, told us a story that he just recently dealt with a family that was paying way too much for their health insurance. Listen to what Sevi had to say. At one, two days ago, it was a husband and wife that they were paying $1,700 a month. Um, so that's outrageous for a family of two. Um, they're not old. They're, one was in their late 40s, one was early 50s, and healthy, no medications, nothing like that whatsoever. And we ended up getting them the top policy in the market for $985. For both of them. For both of them, which so is... Why were they... Who, why, why was their original policy so expensive? Well, there's two reasons. One is that the agent is new, and he's chasing a paycheck. So he didn't do the clients right. So you have that, and then the other one was is that they just went for Obamacare stuff and they made too much money so they don't qualify for any subsidies so they had to take a $13,000 max out of pocket which led them also to a $13,000 deductible which means they have to spend $13,000 before the insurance company pays a dime. So they're paying $1,700 a month they have a $13,000 deductible, and you might as well light your money on fire at that point. <laughs> What's, you might as self insure. So that has been really. All right, so basically lighting your money on fire, he says. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. That they, yeah. they basically saved half. Half, yeah. yeah. And, and got more benefits. 
right. from the plan that Sevy wrote. Sevy's one of our original agents. Right. You know, he started with the company when I did back in 2009. Mm -hmm. So Sevy really is very knowledgeable on how to design a plan mm -hmm. based around the family's needs. But as you heard, you know, everything that that person or that family was paying for, mm -hmm. Sevy increased their benefits right. and lowered their cost. And their deductible yeah. went down significantly. significantly. I mean, they were paying a $13,000. I yeah. mean, how can the, that, that's not even insurance no. when you have to pay thirteen no. grand, right? It's, it's, you know, when we look years back mm -hmm. and we look what deductibles were and how much people had to come out of pocket, mm -hmm. they thought it was high then. Right. And today it's just unaffordable. Unaffordable. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and so we also talked to Robert, Robert who's another yeah. one of your agents, and he was able to help an, a family of four yeah. um, during this open enrollment. So take a listen to what Robert had to say about a family he helped. So one particular story that really stood out during open enrollment was a, a family of four. Uh, they were paying roughly $3,500 per month for their health insurance, and they could not even get a doctor in network. So fortunately, they did qualify for our product, I was able to save them about $24,000 that year as switching them over with a no deductible plan option and they're able to go to the doctor that they chose from. That sounds like too good to be true, right? Well, usually when people say that to me, I say, well, yeah, typically when you look at a marketplace option, that seems to be the case. But the difference is that marketplace plans don't ask anything health related. So if you can qualify health wise, it lowers the cost tremendously. It's kind of like car insurance. If you have a clean driving record, you get a lower rate. Same thing with health insurance. So I heard in both of those stories that basically they had gotten into a marketplace like mm -hmm. an Obamacare um, health insurance plan, and that was the issue, right? Right. right. Because they were both healthy, so yeah. they didn't need to be in these plans that... Right. And, and you know, that's some of the confusion today, mm -hmm. because some people think that they have to go to Obamacare right. and go to the Affordable Care Act. And as you saw by that family, I mean, Seve saved, uh, or Robert saved them. Twenty-four thousand dollars a year. year. I mean, it's that's crazy. a that's a car for a college student. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's a salary. That's a, that's a <laughs> right? heck of a vacation for a lot of people, too. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, and that, that's just one of hundreds and hundreds of stories that we can that we can share. And yeah. <clears throat> but the confusion is that people don't realize that there are other alternatives, mm -hmm. and that's us. That's yeah. us. All right, so what do people need to know? They've got two days left. I assume you guys will be working through the weekend. We will be working through the weekend. My right. office is cranking right now. The phones are ringing, right. and we are just helping so many people out at this point. But don't, don't wait till Sunday. You know, don't wait till Sunday. <laughs> you've um, already waited long enough, right? Yeah, you've waited long enough. Um, you know, You're giving Gary Miller heart palpitations. Yeah, because <laughs> if, if a situation comes up where we can't get, get you through underwriting, yeah then it's too late to get you into you know, another plan another plan yeah. yeah so so which is what happened to me so i had a pre-existing condition i have no acl in my knee so gary had to put me in with another plan mm -hmm. because he couldn't help me with under right. his current under his plan so that's why it's so important but i still got a really great deal yeah, got a great deal yeah you know, one of my associates was able to help well, yeah but Lowered my payments on my health insurance. But which, if you waited till Sunday right. <laughs> and we couldn't get you insured, yeah. then you would have had to wait till Then I would have had to been out of November. luck. November, yeah. yeah. All right, so what, how can people reach you, Gary? Um, just go to uh, my health insurance uh, website mm -hmm. or they can reach me with the number that's up on the screen right now, which is 561-222-9435. And I Is that your it. personal cell phone? That's my personal cell phone, <laughs> oh so you God. can even get me. At, you are brave, Gary. I'm brave. I, <laughs> I have gotten calls at midnight, oh my but you know gosh. that's that's just Don't the time of the year. Don't call Gary at midnight, folks. That's all right. I'm up. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's just the time of the year, and, and we're just willing to help anyone that really needs the help right now. Yeah. So yeah. December fifteenth, U.S. Health Advisors, give Gary a call. Not at midnight. <laughs> text him. Yeah. You can text him. <laughs> can yes. Text him. Or you can reach him reach him on his website as well, which is ushealthagent.com slash, slash Gary, Gary Miller. Miller. Right. Gary Miller. Gary the insurance wizard. You are a wizard, Gary. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And if you have any questions, you can also comment oh, yeah. below Absolutely. on this video yep. and Gary will get back to you. Right. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Awesome. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great one. Right. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Suzanne Boyd, and we have 
Gary Miller. Gary insurance the insurance wizard. wizard. I dressed up for you today, Gary. I, know. I, I feel like we should be going out, not giving it's, health advice, right? It's, it's prom time. <laughs> That's right, it is prom time. Where's my corsage? <laughs> All right, so today we are talking about short-term medical. And it's funny, after you mentioned this on the phone, mm -hmm. I was like, let me go check my insurance policy because I'd never even heard of this. Yeah. What is it? Well, short-term is, it was designed for just what it says, short-term. Yeah. You know, in between positions, in between jobs, you would have a, a short-term policy to take you from one job to another. But since Obamacare is open enrollment from November through the end of December, short-term medical has become the standard, yeah. which unfortunately, and there a lot are a of, lot of pitfalls. And people don't know they're getting into this short-term medical health insurance a coverage, right? A lot of times right? that's correct. All yeah. right, so there is a clause that actually you can look out for that um, that will basically tell you whether or not you have a short-term medical policy. And who, who should be looking out for these things? Well, anyone that goes into uh, buying insurance right now should be looking for um, the short-term clause, mm -hmm. which... And it looks like this. It's it on looks the phone. like that. Yeah. Um, it basically of, says that you're going to have to renew this policy. Yeah, they're not, they're not renewable policies. So every time the short term, whether it's a three month, a six month, or a 12 month, or an 18 month policy, it has to be renewed. Mm -hmm. And the pitfall there is that if you've developed a medical condition in that period of time, mm -hmm. well, they may not renew your policy because now you have a pre-existing condition which is pretty scary. So what can you do if you realize you've gotten into one of these policies mm -hmm. and and can you, let's say they put you in one, can you get out? Yeah, oh sure, absolutely. Yeah. You know, they, you can cancel them at any time and then right. just call me, we can put you in a permanent permanent policy. Yeah. And that's really what you want. You want permanent insurance, not temporary insurance. Right. Yeah. So what are the, because I feel like short, like what is, what's the time frame? Like you're talking six months, a year, two well, years, Well, they've extended years? them. Um, they've extended them out to even 12 months and 18 months right now. I'm, I'm, I've seen some short-term policies even 36 months, which is, which is better. But one of the problems there is that they do medical underwriting at time of claim. They'll, they'll ask you some medical questions up front, mm -hmm. but then if you have a claim, then they'll go back and then look at your medical history. Oh. And then they may deny your claim based on the underwriting of time of policy. So it's, it's, it's pretty scary when that happens. So a long-term policy is something that you get automatically yeah. renews, it, right? It automatically guaranteed renewable. Okay, yeah. so the short-term policy is the thing that you would have to renew every few every, years or few months, depending on what the term, what the term Whatever the duration is. of that policy is. And you need right. to go look at yeah. your policy. You, you need to look at it. Are there some questions you should be asking your agent um, beforehand? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you putting me in a short-term medical policy? Is this policy? a short-term <laughs> policy? Yeah. And how long is the duration of the policy? Yeah. That's really the most important question. Because so many people get into these plans, and they don't realize that they have a short-term policy until it's too late. Yeah. That's not something you want to be. All right. So, Gary, we've had some people wanting to ask you questions yeah. because a lot of people have questions about health insurance because it can be very confusing. So today we're starting a new segment called Ask Gary. And we mm -hmm. start with Jean, who is approaching 65, and she's about to sign up for Medicare. So here's Jean's question. Hi, Gary. My question is, I'm approaching 65 years old, and so I'm going to qualify for Medicare. But my question is, uh, when I talked to my Blue Cross Blue Shield people, they said, oh, we can set you up with that. Are they really the best people to take care of setting me up on my um, Medicare? That's it. <laughs> She's like, what's the name of it again? <laughs> oh, right, Medicare. Um, so what should she do? Well, first, she should investigate all, of, all the options out there because there's a lot of options. Of course, you're going to have your Medicare A and B, but then you're going to have supplements. Mm -hmm. And that's really um, where so many people get confused because it is confusing. There's a lot of supplements out there. Our company doesn't handle over the age of 65, mm -hmm. but there's, a, there's a, a nonprofit out there called Shine. And they'll just guide you through all the choices and based on your particular need, then you can make that decision They'll help and you. Then, then you can find an agent because they don't sell they'll just advise yeah so um so her question about blue cross blue shield mm -hmm. signing her up they right. they want the they, they want they want, they the, want business. the business sure right absolutely. so of course they say they can help yeah. her right but is she getting any decreased benefit by signing up through blue cross blue cross blue shield no. or doing it on her own not at no. all not at all she there's just, there's a lot of different you know 
part part uh, D, part E, F unfortunately is going away, part you know, part F, but you'll have your Medicare A and B. Yeah. yeah. So go with Shine, yeah, which is a nonprofit, non-profit. that can kind of guide yeah. you in the right direction, right. maybe first before exactly. you go through a health yeah. insurance company. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the next question is from Taylor. And I remember this when I was young, not young anymore, but um, when I, you know, the millennials these days, they're, they're getting their first jobs, mm -hmm. right? And you get that open enrollment from your company that says, okay, you have to choose a plan. Right. Okay, so let's listen to Taylor's question. Hi, Gary. I just graduated college and got my first real job. There are so many healthcare options. How do I decide? Okay, so how do you pick like that? expensive one or the middle one or the really cheap one <laughs> you know we were all young at one time <laughs> and we all thought that we could never get sick or never get hurt right. typically what it is with with millennials right now is that they're you really need just catastrophic you know just in case something big happens and of course injury because that's typically where a lot of millennials wind up with with uh, medical expenses yeah. you know their, their lifestyle so what does sports. catastrophic look like catastrophic is something with a with a higher deductible Keep your cost low, gotcha. and um, just have it there, just in case you know something something major would have happened. So because the risk for injury at that I'm it, sorry, the risk for illness at that age pro is, is low. Yeah. yeah. So usually that's the lowest option because yeah. it has the highest deductible, highest deductible, but you're paying the least out of pocket every month. Right. Correct. Correct. So that's the smartest one, maybe for yeah. millennials. And the older you yeah. get, the more expensive you need to have the yeah. policy, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. That's the risk. Yeah. It's right. just managing the risk. That's all it is. Yeah. So if someone wants to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Right on the screen, 561-222-9435 or on my website, email me, uh, which uh, my website is up on the screen right now. Uh, but the best way to reach me is uh, phone my cell phone. My cell phone. 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 cell phone on uh, right my now, cell phone so is there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, been, it's been vibrating. So. Has it? <laughs> <laughs> so people must be calling. Somebody's calling. <laughs> That's right. And if you have any questions for Gary, any health insurance issues, he's been in the business for more than 30 years, it's right? Almost, almost 30 years. Almost 30 yeah, years. I hate so to say. He's, he knows a lot about this business. I and got in it when I was 10. That's what I say. Yeah. That's what I say, Gary. <laughs> All right. So make sure you join us for uh, Gary the Insurance Wizard, Wizard every month. I can't even speak today. I don't know what's wrong with me. And make sure you call Gary if you have any questions or leave a comment and he'll answer you here on his Facebook and YouTube channel. All right. Absolutely. Thanks, Suze. Thanks, Gary. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. All right, good morning everyone and welcome to Gary the Insurance Wizard. I'm Suzanne Boyd. I'm Gary Miller. <laughs> He's Gary the Insurance, the insurance Wizard. Wizard. So episode three, and um, I was actually talking with Gary about this because I may have some health issues. <laughs> <laughs> I may have a bum knee. <laughs> um, but I was saying, you know, I heard from someone that if you are going in for a procedure, for instance, I had to go get an MRI done, mm -hmm. that you really should be doing some things to help with your claim so that it's not exorbitantly expensive, right. correct? Right. So what are some of the things, well, you, I mean, should you call your insurance company you first? You should. You know, a yeah. lot of insurance companies have what's called pre-authorization. Mm -hmm. So if you're going in for surgery or, or any type procedure, they want to know about it. Mm -hmm. And of course, you want to check to make sure that your provider is in the network, the PPO network or the HMO network yeah. that, that you're... And don't the providers usually do that for you? Sometimes. Yeah. But I would, I would be proactive and make sure that, you know, you don't want to be surprised. Yeah. Would, is it better, I mean, can it be better sometimes for you just to pay out of pocket rather than filing a claim with your health insurance? Sometimes, you know, sometimes the provider will give you a cash price. Mm -hmm. And that cash price can sometimes be lower than some of these high deductibles that are out there right now. Yeah. So thousands you, of dollars, Thousands right? of dollars, yeah. yeah. So always check with your health insurance always check. first. Yes. Um, and the other thing we wanted to talk about is the critical illness yeah. um, coverage, because I don't think people even know that this is available. Well, that's true. Yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of agents don't don't offer it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just in for the health insurance part. But so many people are unaware that you know a critical illness such as cancer or a heart attack, <clears throat> excuse me, stroke. Uh, any major uh, organ transplant. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> that's not just a medical problem. Mm -hmm. It becomes a financial problem for the, 
for the family. Yeah, because that means then you're out of work, possibly, mm -hmm. to go get some of your treatments yeah. um, and all these things that could happen that you aren't expecting. In fact, we um, we talked to Greg Van Wy, who is also a U.S. Health Advisors agent and a colon cancer survivor, yeah. about um, critical illness and how it helped one of his clients. Take a listen to this. I'm a stage four colon cancer survivor, and that was 15 years ago. They didn't offer critical illness at the time. I wish they would have. I give it to all my customers today. I had actually I have a customer that didn't want it, said to take it off his policy. I refused to do so. I convinced him to buy it. Three years later, his wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. He called me and asked me how the policy would pay. I explained to him that he'd have a $4,000 deductible and 100% of the bill would be paid on his health insurance. But then I looked up and he had critical illness, $50,000 worth of coverage. I told him he'd get a check in the mail for $50,000. He simply did backflips. He said, I'm so happy. He sent me tons of referrals. He's just been a great customer ever since. I mean, that's pretty amazing, you know, that you just get a check in the mail for, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and you can kind of use that however you need to. Yeah. Yeah. You have a similar story? I have a very similar story. Years ago when I was in the field, mm -hmm. you know, and, and helping customers, I ran across a woman, we'll call her Kathy, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> I was in her office and I presented the product and I, I showed her the critical illness and it was only $30 a month. <clears throat> oh, so that's, you can get it for as cheap yeah, as 30 uh, bucks know, a month. Yeah, you know, it's, it's wow. as inexpensive as that. Right. But at that time, she said to me, look, I really can't afford that $30 a month. And I mm -hmm. said, Kathy, you really have to have this mm -hmm. on your policy. I said, you know, it's a lot easier to put it on now. Mm -hmm. And if you can't afford to take it off, then rather try to get it later after something happens. Yeah. So she agreed and we put it on. And I didn't hear from her for two years. And then her office manager, who was part of the presentation while I was there, simply said to me, you know, when, when Kathy was taking out that policy, you talked about that critical illness portion. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I remember specifically. Mm -hmm. And she said, can you check to make sure Kathy still has it if she didn't cancel it? I knew the story wasn't going to be good after that. Yeah. So I did call my home office and Kathy didn't cancel it. And I called her back and I said, she still has the policy. She said, good, because she was just diagnosed with stage three leukemia. Oh, wow. So nonetheless, 30 days later, she got a check in the mail for $16,000. Wow. And That's she was so thankful. Yeah. She was she... able to pay her car payment, her rent, her electric bill, because she was unable to work mm -hmm. for those four or five months as she was undergoing treatment. Now, is the, the, the I'm sure that cost is different for everyone, but yeah. is that about average that you well, find? Well, that's the low end, but yeah. we've seen people get checks seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000, you know, in, in a lump sum. Right. That really helps them. It not only helps them, but it helps family members, and it pays for other things such as car payments, rent, credit card bills, any expense that they have. And it, it also helps the spouse because the spouse sometimes in the event of a serious illness like that is it can't work can't work they yeah. don't work they're, they're maybe traveling maybe they want right. to go up to sloan kettering in new york right. they've got you know uh, travel expenses they've got housing expenses mm -hmm. that money comes so such at a great time in, in, in need when that family needs it the most so i think we have um a, a look at some of the things that this critical illness coverage does pay for so and and really you can do you can use the cash for anything that you yes. deem is necessary so mm -hmm. whether that's your your mortgage or to replace your lost income pay any out-of-pocket medical expenses that aren't covered by insurance which is a lot sure. these days right mm -hmm pay for any experimental treatment. Experimental treatments because, you know, most policies don't pay for experimental treatment. Yeah, so you any know. home health care expenses yep. that you might need um, if you're in school and tuition, if you want to return to school, um, any debt, you can pay off debt with this um, critical illness coverage, maintain your family's lifestyle, you can pay your taxes any travel or temporary housing expenses if you're away from home, if you're getting treatment away from home, you can pay for childcare. So really pretty much anything. Yeah, and what I like too is it really maintains the family's lifestyle because any event of a, a critical illness like that, mm -hmm. you know, it's so disruptive, not only medically, but financially. Mm -hmm. And you want it to be as normal as possible. And having that extra cash really, I've seen it so many times throughout my career, really makes a difference for that family.
All right, so if anyone has any questions about critical illness coverage, they just call you? Call me, call me, <laughs> go to my website, call me at 561-222-9435. Uh, be happy to, to help anyone that, that, that is in need of a product like that. And All even right. if you have a, you know, a, an Affordable Care Act plan now with high deductibles, mm -hmm. you know, you can use this as a supplement, but if something serious that were to happen, that the cash would help you pay those high deductibles. And what's considered critical illness? Uh, cancer, heart attack, life-threatened cancer, heart attack, stroke, kidney failure, any major organ transplant, mm -hmm. uh, any heart-related issue. So So my bum knee is not covered? Not the bum knee. <laughs> not the bum knee. <laughs> not the bum knee. Oh, well. <laughs> but I do have other coverage for that. Yes, so. absolutely. <laughs> that's good. All right, Gary. Well, thank you so much. Anything else you want to add? No, nope, that's it. All right. That was Gary, the insurance wizard. Make sure you join us next month. What are we going to talk about next month? A lot of great stuff. Liz, All right. A lot of great stories that have come out from this uh, open enrollment that, that oh, we have. Oh, yeah. 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 I forgot about that. Yeah, people, open enrollment. People was... are starting to realize they've got these very high deductibles. Oh, so. and you're getting all the calls, I oh, bet. we're getting all the calls. <laughs> all right, so we'll talk about that next month on Gary the Insurance Wizard. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, now we're up. Hi everyone, I'm Suzanne Boyd. I'm here with Gary Miller because we are debuting your new show. Absolutely. Are you excited about this? I'm excited. Yeah. So Gary has been in the health insurance industry for almost 30 years and he has a lot of knowledge. <laughs> and so he really wanted to start his own show to sort of talk about some of the things that can be very confusing to the average person, right? Right. Like, Very, I bet you get these phone calls all the day, all day. Every day, all day, yeah. all night, yeah. right now during open enrollment. Yeah, so right now we are, we are in open enrollment, and so that is why Gary wanted to kind of debut this show, Gary the Insurance Wizard, during open enrollment. But first, we need to talk about that name. Where did Gary the Insurance Wizard come from? <laughs> it came from, well, I used to run an office in Fort Lauderdale. Right. All my young guys, and what we did was, well, they named me the Wizard, and it just stuck. Yeah. So, appropriate now during uh, during open enrollment. So, and appropriate now for your show. Appropriate for the show. I think Absolutely. it's a great. So everyone thinks he looks like a wizard, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's just the hair, I guess. I guess right. So. Okay. So let's talk about open enrollment. So what do people need to know as we're going into open enrollment? It, it is now underway. Yeah. It's very confusing. Yeah. You know, it's confusing to the normal person who goes out there and tries to navigate healthcare.gov. Mm -hmm. and Which is it, Obamacare. Obamacare. Mm -hmm. And it gets more confusing every year. So what is open enrollment? What is that? It's a period of time where people with pre-existing conditions mm -hmm. can get into a health insurance plan without any medical underwriting. So no matter what their health condition, they, they can get can covered. They can get into a plan. Yeah, right. Um, so, if you're healthy and have no pre-existing, you can pretty much get insurance anytime. Right. But if you have a pre-existing condition and have been prevented in the past, yeah. this is the time period that you can get that you can get health that insurance. That you can get coverage without any medical underwriting whatsoever. So, what is the state of the current open enrollment? Because I feel like it's not good. Yeah, well, <laughs> right? We get phone calls. My office gets phone calls. You know, we're we're an agency now of over three thousand agents mm -hmm. in thirty states. So we can help. We can help navigate that confusion. So I assume premiums and deductibles are up. Yes, premiums have gone up every year. Uh, that, that Obamacare has been in existence. Mm -hmm. Deductibles keep getting higher, and it's very disheartening for people who couldn't afford it back then, and now it's even more affordable and more out of pocket. You know, we talk about two types of things, Suzanne, with, um, with insurance premiums. There is the price of what your premium is, mm -hmm. but then there's the cost. Now, the cost factors in, because you're paying your monthly premium, but if you've got to meet a big deductible, and the deductibles now have gone over $8,000 this year, wow. you know, you've got to factor that into the cost. That's the overall cost of doing business on your plan. Right. So not only are your premiums higher, yes. but your deductibles are higher. Right. And you know, what I'm finding too is that like a lot of doctors and hospitals and are, are not in my plan. Right, right. Because the networks every year get skinnier and skinnier. Mm -hmm. You know, the doctors have had, you know, not so good experience so so many doctors have opted out 
Now that may not seem important to you while you're healthy, but come the time when you or a family member come down with a serious injury or, or illness mm -hmm. and you want to choose the best doctor for your particular illness or injury, okay. sometimes that's not available. Someone that you trust. Someone you trust. Okay, so this has been a lot of bad news, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the good news about open enrollment? I mean, there are other alternatives yes. other than Obamacare. Yeah, there right? are other options. And yeah. that's what we do at US Health. Mm -hmm. We offer a different option than what you see out there on healthcare.gov or any of the other health insurance sites. Um, we offer a different option uh, because we've built plans that you know, people say, look, I'm, if I'm paying premium, I want to have some benefits out of my plan. And right. we've designed a plan to offer mu benefits much sooner than on a traditional plan. Mm -hmm. And that gives the, the, them the security of knowing, okay, if I am paying premium, that I can get some help with covering some of my bills up front. And then we have a catastrophic option. And what made us unique is you don't have to buy that catastrophic option right up front. Mm -hmm. You only have to transition into that, it's a plan that you have a, a safety net of a, of, a, of, a, of a major catastrophic plan, right. but you don't have to pay for that unless right you need bat. it. Right. Yeah. You know, so you like, can get that after you can get something's that after. already happened. Right. It's like oh. buying automobile insurance without collision, and people would be, feel very uncomfortable doing that, but if you had an accident, then you could add collision in. Try that with your auto policy yeah. doesn't exist. So you can do that you can do through that. U.S. Health Advisors. Yes, correct. So for, for many years, I worked for a company and had insurance. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden now that I have my own business and don't work for anyone else, right. I'm you know about to get off of COBRA. So I think yeah. probably someone like me is yeah. someone that, that could come to, to you, right? right. Correct. And, and that's the type of person that really you can help. That's correct? our market. It's the self-employed, it's the individual that has lost coverage either mm -hmm. through a COBRA or leaving a position. Uh, individuals now that, that are responsible for paying their own health insurance premiums. Mm -hmm. uh, so many small companies are not offering it anymore. You know, and it's very interesting because the, the policy that Gary had showed me um, actually is more comprehensive than the one I had under my mm -hmm. company, and it's the same price that I'm paying yeah. for COBRA. Right. So. Well, that's interesting too because we had someone call our office yesterday and I was listening to a conversation with one of my agents and for husband and wife, they were in their mid-50s, they were paying about $1,200 last year. Their premium has gone up to almost 1500 this year wow. and their deductible went up. So again, there's the scenario where they're so so frustrated yeah. because their out-of-pocket costs have just soared, skyrocketed. skyrocketed throughout the years. So the, the fifth thing that you tell people about open enrollment is don't go it alone. Don't go it alone. Yeah. Um, you can go out to healthcare.gov, you can go there. I mean, if you get a subsidy, you know, if, if you're of the income level that you can qualify for a subsidy, we think that's the best option mm -hmm. for our clients at that point. But if you're one of the people, the middle class America, that is really struggling with those with those premiums and high deductibles, then the option is here. Okay. Don't go it alone. You know, so many people over the years in the past have gone out to healthcare.gov and they've just enrolled, you know, through through the through the internet. Yeah. I think that's the biggest mistake they can make. You really need someone to advise you and guide you through all the steps and make sure we're, we're picking the right plan for the right person. So you can help anyone, someone who's healthy, someone who has pre-existing conditions, even if you can't cover them yourself, you have other options yeah. for them, Yeah, you know, right? we, can, we can advise them. Yeah. Yeah, but our, our plans are, are primarily for the healthy. For the healthy. Yeah, and that's yeah. how we can keep our premiums reasonable. Sure. Um, but yeah, we can advise, and that's what we do. That's why we're called U.S. Health Advisors. We advise you, and that's the key today. We, All right. We want to help people. And if they want to reach you? Name, uh, my number is up on the screen. Yeah. My website is there. You can reach me through my channel on 9435. Yeah. You can reach me on my YouTube channel. You can reach me on my Facebook channel. Okay. So just reach out to us and we Yeah, and if you want to leave a comment below, yeah. um, Gary will get back to you. Yes, absolutely. Um, if you have any like health insurance questions or anything about open enrollment, just leave a comment below and Gary will get back to you and reach Definitely. out to you. Yeah. Definitely. And you can go watch him live on YouTube as well. So we're going to be doing this once a month. Once, about once a month right now. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have any idea what we want to talk about next time? There's going to be a lot we can talk about next time. <laughs> a lot. Because There's we'll, always we'll something be, to talk we'll about. We'll be more into open enrollment. I can share a lot of stories for the, from people that, like you say, 
uh, that have bad news, unfortunately. Yeah. But so the deadline for open enrollment. Deadline for open enrollment is December fifteenth. Okay, so you have to December fifteenth. So make sure you you got a month. Basically. Got a month. You got a yeah. month, and that month will go very quickly. Yeah. Very quickly because if you're confused. You know, people tend to get complacent and push it away. Mm -hmm. That's me. I'm a procrastinator. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> right. You know, the last week of open, enro open enrollment is hectic, yeah. and uh, okay. sometimes you can't even get one of our. It's like on giving your taxes to your CPA April 14th. Yeah. <laughs> My wife's don't do it. Don't do that. <laughs> That's right. All right, Gary Miller, Gary the Insurance Wizard, what do you think? I think it's uh, great. Good so far. All right, well, we'll see you back here next month. Yep. And uh, make sure you hit up Gary with any questions that you have. All right, have a great day, everyone. Have a great one.